We're at the ASCO annual meeting with Dr. Roy Herbst. He presented some interesting data on a new PDL1 inhibitor. Dr. Herbst, tell me a little bit about your results. Right, so I presented uh, a phase one study of MPDL3280. Uh, that's an agent that targets uh, PDL1 uh, in, in tumors. Um, you know, the immune system is uh, ever present and, and is important for, for treating cancer. You know, lung cancer cells have uh, a large number of mutations, we know that. And those mutations are presented on the surface of the tumor cell through MHC class 1, and uh, that actually binds to the T cell receptor, and you would hope that T cells would actually then kill the tumor. That, of course, doesn't happen that well, and the reason for that probably is uh, that PDL1 is induced on tumor cells, it's a protein, and that protein binds to another re to a receptor on the T cell called PD1, and therefore turns off the T cell. It disguises the tumor cell so the T cell can't kill it. Um, so what we uh, presented here was the first uh, study of an antibody against the PDL1 on the tumor cell. This is a specific antibody. Uh, we, we show that by uh, blocking that, we, we, we make the tumor now visible to the immune system. And uh, in a number of tumor types, lung cancer, melanoma, renal, head and neck cancer, colon cancer, we show that tumors shrank. They shrank quickly in many cases, and the, and, and the tumor shrinkage was durable. And in lung cancer, the response rate was upwards of 20%. Uh, it could be improved um, in a small number of patients if we looked at PDL1 biomarker staining in the tumor microenvironment. And this was all done with uh, very reasonable uh, toxicity. You know, one of the concerns you always have is that if you leave the immune system unchecked a bit, you might have immune-related toxicities. Uh, pneumonitis, we didn't see any uh, grade 3 to 5 pneumonitis, which is something you worry about in lung cancer. Uh, we didn't, uh, we had some very mild hepatitis, some patients with some glucose abnormalities, some fatigue, but really the drug was, was very well tolerated. And it's quite exciting because now uh, this in lung cancer uh, has the potential, along with some of the other PD-1 approaches that are moving forward as well, to really become a new paradigm for how we treat these patients in refractory disease, in frontline metastatic disease, and I would hope that we move these agents to the earlier stages of disease as well, alone or in combination. And this is early research, and there's a lot more research on lung cancer being presented at ASCO. What are some of the things that you find most intriguing for this year's presentations? Yeah. This year at ASCO, there are other interesting trials in lung cancer. I'm uh, particularly impressed by the, um, the trial with the HSP90 inhibitor from Cinta, which is um, uh, looking at that agent in combination with docetaxel um, versus docetaxel in patients with refractory lung cancer. Uh, I thought those results were quite interesting and uh, in certain subsets of, of patients and certainly support moving that drug forward to phase three. Um, I'm also um, interested in uh, the BIBF uh, drug, um, the, uh, the, the VEGF, uh, BFGF inhibitor, which is also showing some interesting uh, uh, and, uh, uh, data uh, in non-small cell lung cancer. So uh, a number of new agents that look quite exciting. There's also, as you would expect, a large amount of data on uh, groups of um, biomarkers and sequencing and, and how we're going to use personalized medicine to treat this disease. I was also struck by the, the trial that Naya Rizvi is presenting. Uh, Scott Gettinger from our group at Yale was one of the major authors on that as well, which looked at the, um, the, the PD-1 inhibitor from Bristol-Myers um, in combination with uh, chemotherapy, which is one of the first experiences starting to take those agents uh, that target the immune system and using them with chemotherapy. So a very interesting and positive ASCO uh, for patients with lung cancer. A lot of new uh, developments in, in the works. Thank you very much, Dr. Hurst. Thank you.